Hi everyone, welcome to another hashtag Ask Jim. We're up to episode 24. Can you believe we're still going after 24 weeks? Jim? Nearly six months. Nearly six months, so let's hopefully we get to 50. That'd be the goal. Uh, I just want to do a few things with housekeeping. So I just want to acknowledge everyone. So thanks for coming along tonight. So for everyone watching at home, there's around 35 people already tuning in. We have Jim's training every three weeks roughly. So we have a little crowd here. So they're going to ask a lot of questions tonight, which they prepared for Jim. We're going to try and acknowledge as many people on the live feed as we can. We do cross post, so make sure you leave your questions or comments on the Jim's group page so can we acknowledge you. And um, thanks for tuning in. Sal's already tuning in saying g'day. So interact on that feed because the best questions and comments will obviously get one of these books. So I'll give that one out to someone online. But these two books here, so that's Jim's book. And the other one's Biohistory. So to the two best questions that you want to pick from the crowd tonight, make a note of it. And we're going to give them out a signed book. And I'll give this one to online. So interact on the feed and we'll try and read them out. Now, remember, we do have a Jim's shop now. So this shirt here, plus some bucket hats and all that sort of stuff. You can go to gyms.net, go to the shop and get them if you want to get it. Um, we're just testing it out, so please buy some stuff so we can do some more and get more people in the apparel. The Jim's cast, we do have a podcast. Does everyone here know we have a Jim's group podcast? No. So all these replays get made into audio. So a lot of people said to us, we don't want to watch the video or whatever, I want to listen to my podcast. So the Jim's cast, if you search that, all of these go up, and plus we do long form interviews and stuff which are on there. And new content every week, so make sure you follow Jim's group on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And also Jim has Instagram. So we're going to call it Jimstagram when we get to 10,000 followers. But <laughs> We have Jim. How many have you got now? You're up to around 800, but you've got really good engagement. So engagement's what you want with platforms, not likes so much. Engagement, so which is a good thing. So at the Jim Pemmon on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well. And I just want to mention before we go, does everyone here know about the mentor program? So maybe Jim, you want to talk a bit about the mentor program for everyone in the audience. Mm. We mentioned it last week, but the Jim's mentorship when they start in business, they do have access to people yeah. in the group. Well, it came out of what happened in West Australia in Perth last year when that. Uh, franchisee of ours went crazy, killed his family. And uh, everybody's very shocked about it. I went over to talk to the um, franchisees there and one of the things they suggested was that we have mentors who were franchisees, not the franchisor, but somebody who's specifically there that you could ring and talk to who understands what they're going through. But about half the people there actually volunteered that night. So we did a bit of screening and a bit of training. We've got mentors all over Australia now so that any franchisee has got an issue, there's someone they can go to. And, and just talk. They're not, they're not, they're not psychologists. They're not counsellors. They're just, they're just fellow franchisees who want to, who want to lend an ear. And, and they're not paid. They're just there to help out if they can. And that list is on Jim's online. So then you log into Jim's online. Yeah. There'll be a list there where you can use and use that support. So we think, make sure we you mention that every week. Because I think it's a big difference with the Jim system. So a few people tuning in now. Around 50 guys watching. So welcome. And make sure you interact on the feed. Leave a comment or question. Um, Jason Pollock says, is there a franchisee franchise or discount button for the online shop? Not yet. Will you discount the price of these for a franchisee or franchisor? Yeah, why not? All right, well, there we go. We'll implement one of them now. We've got to give our people <laughs> discounts on everything, don't we? That's true. And Sal John's Discounts on in. cars, discounts on insurance, discounts on, come on. That's true. All the preferred supplies, actually. We've got a heap, which people probably don't realise. Bunnings yeah. now. I know there's stuff with Bunnings as a card. We've got to get holiday discounts, too. Yeah, we should do a few things. And Sal John's tuning in as well. So, hi, Sal. So, make sure you log on the feed and go to comments. So, now, I'll stop going on. Ben Ward has been kind enough to join us tonight. So. Ben's been in the system, been in gyms for around 22 years. I think you started at, was it 18? 18 I started, yeah, that's 18, right. 18 years old, so you started as a franchisee with Jim's Mowing, and now you're a regional franchisor, and you also do franchisee training as well. So maybe you want to tell us a bit about your story and how you got to be to this point. Uh, yeah, so I um, left high school, um, I wasn't a very good student, um, definitely wasn't uh, going to cut it in uh, at university, I wouldn't have thought. Um, and I just worked for a gym actually for a couple of weeks and he told me that his round was up for sale. So I uh, um, decided that I was going to buy it. Ignorance as please had no idea what I was really doing or um, any of that. But uh, originally the franchise also, the people that sell the franchises, they, uh, they he wouldn't sell it to me because I was too young. And um, yeah, I probably stunk like beer when I saw him and cigarettes <laughs> or whatever. And he probably thought this guy's probably not going to make it. But uh, Eventually, my father actually, uh, he came along to one of the meetings and he said, listen, I'm retiring. Um, he was a policeman. I'm retiring. If he falls over, I'll take it over. So I'm in his insurance, but we reckon he'll make a go of it. Um, and so I did that and uh, made a lot of mistakes, had a lot of fun, um, was earning pretty good money compared to apprentice builders and whatever that my mates were, went off and did. Um, and then after about six or by 2003, I got offered the rights to the region, so to become a franchisor. I'd sold a lot of splits in my first five years where you build up clients um, and then sell them off. So I virtually got the money that I paid for the round back. Um, and then as a franchisor, I really liked that role. Um, enjoyed helping people. 
And then 2007, I backpacked it in. I, uh, well, I had a good time at a conference up in uh, the Gold Coast and jumped out of bed and um, couldn't walk. I'd hurt my back. I was probably trying to lift the training manager mic up off the floor or something. Um, so my backpacked it in and right at that time is when Jim brought the training into uh, the national office. Um, it used to be Ren State based. Um, they decided that they wanted it down here, which was a great decision at the time. Get to meet Jim, have the same consistent message and the same trainers. So um, I applied to become the national training manager, which is uh, the same thing that Mike does. Um, I got Mike in to help me with this, some sessions. After a year or two, Mike started sending Jim emails about how he could improve the course, um, buying Jim Christmas cards and Christmas gifts, and it, eventually it ended up with Jim sort of working out pretty quickly that Mike was going to do a better job than me, and I was out the door and Mike was in. Oh, you know, that'd be a coup. So it's very, well, yeah, he's very Julia Gillard-like, old Mike over there. Um, and so then, yeah, no, but I, uh, at the time I had uh, my first baby, moved back to Geelong and it all sort of worked out quite well. And um, I think at the time I probably thought I could do a better job, but I'd run my race and Jim was spot on and he said that uh, you've got to keep improving. And I sort of got to a point where I was comfortable with the course and change was only, only meant hard work. And so I think that uh, Jim, being Jim, was pretty good at spotting the time was up and got someone else in. Great. And how many Zs do you have roughly now? Uh, 70 down in Geelong, oh, between Little River and Colac. Um, still need a few more. Um, we but struggle to cover work. It's actually the highest penetration in Australia. Yeah. If we had, we've got about, I think, I think the, if we had the same penetration in the rest of the countries in Geelong, we'd probably have about um, 4,000 franchisees at least. Yeah, okay. But Geelong's a great... Um, in mowing the line, more than double. Mm. It's a great town, um, great sort of like a small country town, but great people. And uh, Jim's has just got a good reputation down there, and we um, we like to get involved with the community. Community, and um, yeah, uh, I think it's suited for franchisees as well. It's just that little mm. bit of a drive to Melbourne, so people can buy a franchise, make a decent go of it, make some good money, and uh, enjoy the lifestyle and get down the beach. City of dreams. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Um, so there's around 70 people tuning in now, so welcome to everyone. So make sure you head to the Jim's group page and leave a comment or question. Haydar is tuned in as well. Haydar will be a guest on in a couple of weeks, and he says, good evening, gentlemen. Ben, the superstar, keep up the great work. So thanks for tuning in, Haydar. Haydar is the cleaning divisional owner, so in two weeks' time, he's going to be back on again. So it's always good with Ali as well. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you leave a comment on that Jim's group page. Now, what? Well, without further ado, for everyone watching at home, we've got all our prospective franchisees in, and Mike on the mic has done a great job and rallied up a few questions. And I've had a read through them. They're different, which is great. And um, just want to acknowledge big thanks to Jake as well, the producer behind there. So I'm going to call your name out here, and um, I'm not, not really good at reading your handwriting, right? So <laughs> if I say your name wrong, please, uh, please, I apologise. So I've got Tim or Jim regarding the flow of leads. Yep. So if you want to read out your question, say maybe say your name and what, what division you're from. Yeah, Jim, uh, new franchisee coming on from the uh, in Sydney group. So I'll be card detailing. Great. Jim, a uh, question for you um, with regards to franchisors. Can they control the flow of leads going to franchisees within their region? No. They, they, they have very limited ability to define where the leads go to. The only thing that a franchisor can do to direct leads is if you put somebody on what we call pay for work guarantee priority, which is supposed to cut out after a certain period of time. So sometimes if there's a special reason a franchisee might get put on that or left on it for a while. But apart from that, it's all automated. It goes to the territory holder first, then it looks basically at the people who have had the least, fewest leads in the last three days or whatever. Okay. All right, thank you. Great. Thanks for that question. So we have another question here from the, from the audience, and that is from Rachel. Where is Rachel's question? This is one for Ben Ward, sir. This is for Benny. Benny, what's your favourite gym story? Oh, <laughs> um, there's a lot, um, <laughs> but my favourite... That's on the spot. Um, I remember sitting in the office one day when we were doing the training course and I used to sit about, I'd say, three to five metres from Jim's desk. Um, you won't remember this, Jim, but it was a highlight of my um, week at the time. And I remember there's something happened with, it might have even been when, when I crashed the bus, um, but there was something to do with insurance or somehow, but your ex-wife had called up the finance department and the finance department had given out your, given her your credit card 
and all I could hear on the phone was, you mean to tell me that you've just given my ex-wife my credit card? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't, I don't know exactly what the end, end, what happened there, but I'd say you probably cancelled the credit card. Maybe. <laughs> Does that ring any bells, Jim, for you, that one? Hmm? Does that ring any bells for you, that one at all? It was, tw- it was 12, it would have been 12 years ago, so, but I remember it. <laughs> so there we go. It's a good question. I've right? got I've got nil, not nearly enough franchisees and far too many ex-wives. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, Jim. <laughs> so thanks for that one. We'll get to another question. So make sure, thanks everyone who's tuning in. Leave a question on the feed. We'll get to a few that are left online. Make sure you leave them on the Jim's group uh, feed so I can see them in real time. If they're left on other pages, we're not ignoring you. You just can't see them due to the way Facebook works. So where is Ross regarding responsibilities? Which is a good question. G'day, Jim. Uh, Ross from uh, Jim's Bin Cleaning, a division being regurgitated. Uh, I'm just wondering, is there too much responsibility on franchisors today, in your opinion? Everything depends on franchisors doing their job, really. Um, Franchisors, on the whole, do do a pretty good job, especially in recent years. The level of service, by every measure, has risen. They're more responsive to franchisees. They're ringing back faster. They're bringing them more often. So generally the service is, is improving. But the, it's interesting thing about a, any business with us, whether a franchisee succeeds depends not so much on the division but the individual. And whether a region succeeds depends not on the division again but on the franchisor. And whether a division succeeds, it depends on the divisional franchisor. So everything is about good people. People think there's some businesses that are great and others are not so great. Really, they're very similar. If you've got a great leader, the business will go well. And the same thing at every level. But it, it is a big responsibility. You know, a franchisor is, is, you hold people's, the future of people's families in your hands. And, and, a, and a franchisor who's doing their job well can actually change lives. They can actually help somebody to have a better lifestyle. If somebody doesn't do their job, that person could fail, they could lose their house, they could even lose their marriage. The kids could be without a father. I mean, it is a big responsibility. But as, as they say in, in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. And, and that's what there is. And I feel that very strongly myself. Any franchisee that fails, is, is oh, I always feel that's my failure. What could I have done different? What can we do different? How could we stop this terrible thing from happening? And you never get used to it. Well, you, Ben, anything to add to that? Um, no, but I think when you, as a franchisor, you basically you sell a franchise to someone and then you've sort of got to look that person in the eye and say, well, we're going to make a go of this. Mm. Um, so a franchisor, um, well, 99.9% of franchisors are going to have the best intentions of the person they've sold the round to. Now, obviously, you might have personality clashes or something down the, down the road, but generally speaking, once I commit to someone and sign them up, I'm pretty keen to see them succeed and... Um, you know, you'll, you should lose sleep at night if they're not, not succeeding. And what that first franchise all did to you was quite right. You know, 18 years old, single, is a very poor risk for a franchisee. And he was quite right to knock you back until you had a bit more experience under your belt. Look, I had a case, I found out that a franchise was going to be sold to a young bloke, like 22 years old. I spoke to his mother because she asked me some advice. And I found out that she was putting up the money and this guy was buying a franchise, or she was buying it, because he couldn't get a job. And I said, what right on the spot, you cannot have a franchise. And she got quite upset at me. I told the franchise, or oh, too, you should not have put this person through. You cannot have a franchise. It's, it's too high a risk. She got really angry and upset. She said, I wish I'd never spoken to you. And I said, well, I'm doing this for your benefit. But what I did arrange then is for this young bloke to go out and work with a couple of the franchisees. This is one of Eric's in Eric's area. And uh, guess what? He was terrible. <laughs> and, and, and if that woman, and she wasn't rich, had spent $30,000, that would have just been blown money on a business that could not succeed. So it is, there's a lot of responsibility on a franchisor to make a good decision. And tomorrow morning, um, I'm going to give a talk to the franchisors, prospective franchisors, and the first hour and a half of that talk is all about why they've got to select franchisees and how you do it. It's such a crucial thing. What do you think is the most important thing in selecting the right franchisee then, Ben, from your perspective? Because you've done a lot, obviously, over the years. So yeah. is there any sort of like common traits or sort of things you can point out that you know that will help? Or? Um, it's amazing. You can often think the ones that, the ones that you think are going to be world beaters don't end up being. Um, 
I think probably honest conversations from the start and then you start to get a feel for it. But I, I always make them go and do a couple of days on the mm. road, yeah, make sure that really important. feedback from the people that they work with is great um, and just step them through them. I don't like people being in a rush. So I always say, you know, don't feel like we need to sign you up tomorrow. Let's just take as long as we need. Um, I've definitely got some wrong over the years. I haven't had any major failures, but definitely ones that maybe stayed in the business for 12 months and we had to sell them up, but they generally get most of their money back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, gut feel is a big one. It's hard to put it, uh, uh, to describe it, but you generally get the right feel. Yeah. Um, and the longer you do it, the easier it gets. And the like, like Jim says, the last thing I want to do is put someone on and have them fail. Um, mm. That only makes, you know, I always say when you're in business and it's good for you guys that are all starting up now, you, it's to simplify it right down, it's great to be able to, in my theory is that I want to be able to walk down the street and not have to cross the road when I see someone coming in my direction. So that means if it's a franchisee, an ex-client, you know, you do the right thing by people, mm. you should be able to walk down the street and not be scared of running into anyone. Yeah, that's a great question and thanks for that one. Appreciate it. So I'm just going to get to a few questions online from the other feed before I get back into these. So I'm going to try and run through these ones really quickly, just to acknowledge the people. So Lance Shieldham goes, how do I get into contact with you about a new business idea? Jim, Jim at jims.net. There you go, Lance. It's easy. So, I'm, a, I'm a remarkably easy person to reach. As long as you're not trying to flog me advertising or something. I'm just saying, you're going to get spam tomorrow. That's it. So, so David goes here, if I buy a Jim's mining franchise, do you guarantee we can get enough job? No. No, absolutely not. What we guarantee is that if you haven't got enough work to a certain level, we call the pay for work guarantee level, you can offer free services to your family, to your friends, to any contacts you have, and we will pay you to do them. And that will build your business. But we absolutely do not guarantee you'll be busy from the word go. Mm. In fact, the only way you can really know that you're busy is to buy a split, as, as Ben was talking about before. And then you've got a whole stack of regular clients. But even that doesn't guarantee it, because if you do poor work, you can lose clients. And yeah. yeah. So there's no guarantee of, of work, but there is a guarantee that you, if you do your freebies. And I've never known a franchisee to give good service and do the freebies properly to fail for lack of work. Yeah. The problem is when they don't go out and offer the free services and they want to sit at home and say, hey, it's up to you to provide them with leave. Well, we don't guarantee it. Yeah. What about you, Ben? That's that. What do you tell your guys when they start? Like, so you get that question, like the probably the questions you always get, how much they're going to make, yep. all that sort of stuff. How do you deal with them? Um, yeah, I always like to start them off with regular clients um, and then, yeah, support them with commercial, commercial work if it's there. But, yeah, it's about saying to them, you've got to get out, um, mm. crack the whip. Yep. Start, start getting out mowing some lawns and um, talk to people um, let me know so I think that's important for the new franchisees is to ring your franchisor every day every week as often as you can let them know and an important one too is that it's a common trap for people they, everyone wants to know how gyms goes and how's your business how's gyms how's it going with gyms and your natural reaction is to say really good when really you should be saying not too bad I could do with some more work because then people start finding work for you so tell your franchisor you're struggling for work no matter how busy you are. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point. And we might get a few emails from franchisors tomorrow. So I'm going to get through a few more questions that are coming on here, which are great ones. So we're not ignoring you, we're just trying to get them through and try and do a big bill. And so I'll get through a few of these ones that were left over here. So I've got a great, so Julie Saunders from Dogwash has gone. Jim's, Do, uh, Jim's Dogwash from Murray Bridge. Just want to let you know I'm happy that I got into the franchise and really enjoying it. Thank you. So I'm sure Sharon and the Dogwash team team would be happy to hear that. Now, Warren Bir Birch has gone with a two-part question, which we can both answer. Um, he's gone, do you, do you guys have an app for customers so they can see when the gym's franchisee is on the way, plus to make bookings as well? Do you have an app for the operator so they can send photos to the customers for the bookkeeping too? Or I guess for the quote maybe part of the process. We don't have an app like an Uber app as yet for customers, but it's something we're thinking about. We're, we're developing software for franchisees right now and, and we're going to have a good version available in a couple of months. And that's one of the things we do have in mind, to let the friend, let the customer know exactly what's going on. Like you see in Uber with that little little yeah, thing like marker the for the car. Track. I think yeah. that'd be great. Uh, IT is a huge part of what we're doing right now. It's, a, it's an advantage over the opposition that nobody can come close to matching. We're spending close to $2 million a year on IT development. And there's some really amazing things happening. And it'll get, it's going to get better and better and better. Well, how do you find the tech then from a franchisor's point of view? Um, unbelievable compared to what we started with. Yeah. So we used to pull over and jump into a phone booth, booth to ring clients. Yes. We got little messages on a little pager. Yeah. Um, and, that, and that was an advance because originally yeah. I had to ring up in the evening and get them. Yeah, that's right. So I started just after that sort of evening phase. But yeah, so the old phone box um, were used for business back in the day. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, so, uh, but now the technology in the IT department, how many staff have we got in our gym at the moment? It's a few. Yeah, yeah, a lot. More than, more than 14-ish. Yeah, some plus, sure. plus we've got a whole lot of people working in India. We've got a company yeah. called Evon Tech that does work on our contract for us. It's, it's a massive, massive venture. But it's very exciting. Like the, the improvement we've seen in recent years, the increased volume of work, like 180,000 non-service leads last year, one of the main reasons for that is our customer service has improved dramatically and testably. And one of the reasons is because of our, of our star survey systems, which is really giving us much better feedback on what's going on and putting, on, well, to be honest, a lot more pressure on our franchisees than in the past. So maybe tell people what the complaint ratio is, which is a percentage, which is really... Okay, for those who haven't heard this, um, pre-franchise days, when I had subcontractors, for every 100 leads, I would get 100 complaints, roughly speaking, about the same. In the franchise system, after about the first 10 years when we started measuring these things, we were getting like 5%, so 100 leads, 5 complaints, which is a lot better. And then we started, because it's, you know, franchisees own their own business, we talked about customer service, this kind of stuff, and we put things like lead fees in to, to encourage people, because they get charged a lead for every lead, for every, a dollar price for every lead they take, so that's also an incentive. So we put these incentives in place, we got down to 5%. And then we started measuring complaints more accurately and putting out warning letters and so forth. And, and then later on, we put surveys in place. And the complaint rate went down from 5% down to 1.5% to 1% down to 3 quarters of a percent latest figure. That's more than 100% decline in pre-franchise days. And, it's, and it's, more than, it's less than 20% of what we used to get even in the early franchising days. And I believe we can cut that at the very least in half. And as we've done that, as the, as the complaints have gone down, the work goes up, and I don't think it's a coincidence. And that's, that's when you're comparing it to leads versus work or volumes of work. So if you actually think about how many people, like I've got 70 guys doing roughly eight jobs each per day, that's separate to leads, mm. and those clients can still complain if they do the wrong thing. So yes. it's quite remarkable to think how low it is. But on the Uber, just quickly, I had a, three weeks ago, I was sick and I had my kids at home and uh, I ordered Subway for them to dinner on Uber Eats, which Uber Eats has changed my life. <laughs> um, but I, uh, we got Subway. So I live on top of a really steep hill. Subway is about three k's away, which is down a steep hill and then up a hill. And I'm watching this Uber Eats app, and the Subway took like 45 minutes. It was due 20 minutes earlier. And then I started panicking, thinking, this Uber driver's been hit. Like, he's in a car crash. <laughs> anyway, after eventually I see this thing slowly walking up the hill. The guy was on a bike and he's in mountain goat country. So he sat at the bottom of the hill going, do I really need to deliver this? <laughs> <laughs> but the five star rating, which Jim's big on, he would have been thinking, well, I'm gonna wreck my star rating if I don't deliver his summer. Correct, puts the pressure on. Yeah. yeah, so it was soggy and the kids didn't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get the refund? Did you do the refund? I didn't do that, no, no. I'm not a complainer. <laughs> yeah. I gave five stars because I felt sorry for him. He was, <laughs> he was tired. <laughs> There we go. So I'm just going to get, there's a lot of people still watching on the live stream, so thanks. I'm going to read for you some comments real quickly. So Jim Karan's gone, hi Jim, how do you feel knowing one day Jim's cleaning group will one day rival Jim's mowing? In numbers, I presume. I knew Please. having a mowing go on, we'll get a comment like that from cleaning, I knew it. Let them I knew try. It. <laughs> At the moment, they're doing better. I have big plans. We're going to talk about the mowing conference next week. You guys are going to be, things are going to change. Corey McKinnon goes, how's the quality for Jim's merchandise? Are the shirts comfy thick material? Yes, they are. Probably because it was a bit cold before they give me a bit of grief in the office before the girls. Shane charlton has gone, how, how, one of the traits I look for as a franchisor is how coachable they are. Mm. It's obviously how coachable, and I guess open some of the feedback is, is John Ardeem is tuned in again. And I think that's all the comments here, so we'll leave him there. Jim's Mobile Cafe Victoria is tuned in. Hi, Jim. Eric Jurgens here, you may remember from last week, just want to share something with you that happened to me today. I had just called into a friend's house to make him a coffee. As I was leaving, I got a lead from the call center. This was the first lead I got from Jim since starting three months ago, and to say I was excited is an understatement. They had seen me drive past and took down a number. I called them back and drove straight to them. Not only did they buy coffees, they booked me in for every day. In honour of this, I've made cookies and cream hot chocolate. They'll be available for you at the conference. So we know you like hot chocolate. So right. Jim's Mobile Cafe, it's, it's up and going, and if you've got an event, definitely get them down there. So that's, that's in, is that, in, where is that? Victoria. It's in Victoria. Yeah, Victoria. And I know He's got to come here. He's going to come here, yeah. He's going to be here and make your hot chocolate with cookies and cream. And He's going to come during the training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he'll be the, I think he'll be here um, next week for all that sort of stuff for the conferences. We, if, he can, if he can make our place, I'll kick off the people that are already coming from another company and he can he can have all of our coffees and internal stuff. Well, Rick, if you're watching, there you go. So there's another, yeah. another, another one right there. So there we go. Do you actually have chocolate in your... 
hot chocolates, or are you still just having hot milk, Jim? Yeah. I sometimes have hot chocolate, but but wham is my soy 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 wham. It's hot water and milk, so it's a bit of soy milk and the rest hot water. I recommend you Majad Nutella drink. as well. Good drink. Give Majad Nutella as well, Eric. There's a little secret for you. Somebody gave it to me for Christmas time, and I had two spoonfuls and I chucked it out. I didn't want to bloat. <laughs> she loves Nutella. Uh, you still Rainbow's tuning as well, so g'day, Stuart, and uh, thanks for watching. So I'll get a few more of these questions as well. So actually, I'm going to get to Mike D just to liven up a bit. We've had a few business ones. So Mike D, you had a question which I don't get. So let's see. What so it is. Benny, can you tell? You touched on it a little bit before, but can you tell us a little bit more about the day you crashed Jim's bus? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so the training course used to go from 7 a.m. till 9 at night, um, and there was no accommodation on site. So they used to. Um, finished the training at nine o'clock. Three of the five days went to a nine o'clock at night, which was long days. But um, I, unlike Mike, I didn't have staff to help, so I was in at six, <laughs> preparing the breakfast and getting all the cereals. And then I used to um, send them off to the up to the training sessions. I'd have to hand wash all the dishes, put them all away. And um, it got to five o'clock on the Friday. The sessions had finished, and um, we had to run the trainees back across to Lilydale to their accommodation, and. Um, I think I was probably planning my weekend and was maybe on the telephone trying to call some mates of mine to get them all fired up for what was on the weekend. <laughs> and a water bottle knocked off. One of the trainees left a water bottle on the centre seat of the bus and that had rolled underneath the brake pedal. And so I was driving along, probably not looking at, in front of me properly and went and put the brakes on and there's a bottle of water there and the brake didn't work and I ran up the backside of someone who went to ch your church, I think, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Around the corner. Well, and I presume you didn't get too much bad language or anything from that. No, I, I was, yeah, but anyway, I was a bit worried about how quickly Mike was going to take me out, take over my job. But um, <laughs> actually, and to Jim's credit, I went in there panicking, 5.30 on a Friday. I said, Jim, I've crashed the bus. And he just said, how'd you do that? Water bottle. Just don't do it again. <laughs> no problem. Didn't do it again. <laughs> to put that in perspective, I never insure any of my vehicles. Yeah. So people drive with Jim's vehicle, they've got to be careful because I'm personally going to pay for any repairs. It yeah. tends to, we tend to have a very low accident rate. With, with <laughs> I've actually got a company car, so that um, does worry me. And I do remember that every time I get in. Yeah, not yeah. insured. Yes. So um, I actually told my friends that I um, got interviewed for Jim's book. Told my family and everything, so they... But quick to ask for a copy that's, that's, of that's yep, this book, this book there, here. Yeah. Yeah. And so there's about eight pages, or not eight pages, but I'm in a five five to eight pages and there's me getting the sack, <laughs> me crashing the bus and um, me not driving high enough standards in training. So my family sort of read the book but didn't really comment on my section. <laughs> <laughs> I should have read it first before I gave it out. I think there's around 100 people in the view for the book, wasn't there? Yeah, 100. over 100. She, yeah. She's an amazing job. She, um, yeah, Catherine, yeah. yeah. So we did, we did a, a live with Catherine, which went for around an hour and a half, and that revealed some funny stuff, like Jim's nightclub story and all that sort of stuff, so I recommend you go to the Instagram. It's, the... it's interesting how, how much of what she says I didn't even know about. There's a lot of stuff in there that I, I just didn't well, know. Well, the franchise was also doing, you didn't know yeah, this no, happened and this? I didn't know. Bit of a weird telling. All right, so I've got some other question here. So where is, regarding the research from Mark, where's Mark? Maybe you want to tell us uh, what division you're from? Hi, Jim. Uh, Mark from uh, Bin Cleaning, Queensland. Cool. The franchise all. We look at taking over. Um, how's your research going? Too slow. <laughs> Too slow. Well, we're actually hasn't been going fast enough. I'm looking for a researcher. So if anybody's out there got a you know good knowledge of PhD in, in biochemistry or something like that, we'd I'd love to talk to you. I need someone to drive this. We're prepared to put a couple of million dollars a year into it, and and I just need the right person to run it. It's, it's exciting stuff. There's some really interesting findings we want to follow up and make. We think we can make a very big difference to treatment of mental illness and this kind of problem. Now, for two, show, for yeah. two million, I might put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know we spoke about this last week. We talked about this thing. thing was, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this isn't live. We'll just cut that bit out. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, though, you spoke last week about the, the testing on the rats you're doing. And you said you're really going to be ready to start human trials. And I asked you, well, is there someone in the office you're going to trial them? But you said you're going to trial them yourself. <coughs> so maybe you want to tell there, a bit there, about well, that. Well, there's the particular... What we're looking at is, is the effects of food restriction, which, which is very positive. It actually it should help people treat their mental illnesses and so forth. And we discovered there's, there's a pheromone in the urine of calorie-restricted rats, which, which is very much more prominent in their urine. 
And we know there's something in the urine of the rats that causes animals to behave as if they're calorie restricted. So this is one particular pheromone I just like to try. So what they're going to do is set up a double blind where I get some stuff which is just nothing in particular, and then some with this, and then just try it and see if we can work out if there's any effects. So what's, the, so what's the effect supposed to be if it is if you don't get the double at the blind? It would make you more um, dedicated, more hardworking, more disciplined than what you already are. I'm not that disciplined. I wish you before. <laughs> I'm interested to see. We might even do it on the live one. That'd be interesting. So I'll get to another question here. So um, I've got Grant regarding the brand. Is it Grant? Yep. Where are you from, Grant? Which one? Um, Grant from Jim's Mowing at Spinora Point, awesome. Southern Gold Coast. Question for Jim. Are you happy how the Jim's brand is represented in the marketplace today? I'm, I'm, it, it, we can always do better. That, that's the, the simple answer to it. Um, we have a pretty good reputation. We're certainly better than anyone else in our sphere. But jeepers, we could do better. I, I, I go through complaints every day and I look at them and I see all these comments that people have been let down and say, I'll never use gyms again. It's very hard to take. I could never be satisfied until every single client is happy with the service and every single franchisee is, is satisfied with their business and how they're going. And that would be my aim, more than numbers or anything. If everybody was happy, then I'd be satisfied. But until then, I'll keep on trying to do better. What about you, Ben? What do you think? Um, well, from my own experience, Jim's is uh, yeah very well received, especially down in Geelong. But um, I think Jim's probably right that we can always do better. Um, I think that we've made some good good improvements in the last five years with our um, even just our social media and our um, getting it out there to the people that we are locally owned and we are um, mm. part of the community and individual business owners. That people used to just know that, but. We'll, 10 years ago it started to drop off um, and we've got a really good standing in the community. We do a lot of good things as franchisors and franchisees and you know, whether it's the, um, you know, helping out at the school um, fundraisers or whatever it is, but um, it's important to be part of the community. Because you sponsor a team in Geelong, the Geelong Dragons. The B Dragons, yeah. yeah. They've just hit Foxtel. Uh, there's a six part series on Foxtel, Fox footy. Um, they're an all abilities team, um, which, uh, yeah, it's gone great guns. It's gone, um, yeah, onto Foxtel, and it's great to be part of that. And the kids love it. They're um, getting an opportunity. They've never been able to play footy and stuff like that before. So if we can, I think it was only uh, we put our logo on their jumpers for them, which helped pay for their jumpers. Um, which I think it might have been a two thousand dollar investment or a thousand dollars, but that makes a massive difference to some local kids, and all the parents appreciate it. Um, it and keeps you front of mind, but it keeps yeah. you front of mind like they associate. Oh, that's a good thing you're doing for this, and that's you know that's the sort of the. The social, corporate social responsibility, you know, technical, yeah. that keeps them in their mind. But and that was approved by the vote, wasn't it? You had a vote from the franchisees? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. any, anything <laughs> beyond simple, you know, ad words or whatever has to be voted on. The franchisees have to agree to it. Yes. Yeah, which, which, which apparently they do see the value of that. Yeah. Well, I think there is value, like we call it omni-channel approach, right? Like obviously, you know, you can do a PPC campaign which will drive to a landing page and there's a click which you can track. However, that brand awareness, like I've seen, you know, that footy jumper, I've seen the trailer on the road, then I've gone to the search engine to then get my result. You can't track that person saying, oh, that's what made me do it, right? So that's why doing a multi-channel approach, like you said, the sponsorships and doing a bit of that from the trailers on the road and then having the digital channels is all important. But um, Yeah, so yeah. the Geelong, Geelong community in itself would probably spend roughly six million on um, Jim's mowing services throughout the year. Six million? I would say, yep. at a rough yep. guess. Um, so I mean, we should be supporting the community that supports us. So get around your local sports and you, um, you'll be amazed where it can take you. Well, it's a quite common basic thing. A lot of people in their early days just go to your local, if you have kids who play sports or something, go to their local events, wear your uniform, yep. you know, park your vehicle there or trailer, and that tends to do great guns as it is. You know, Obviously, everyone says digital marketing, this and that, but getting out in your community and getting around there and doing a bit of, bit of introducing yourself, knocking a few doors, the basics do really, they're the best. Yep. You know, they can see you and they're buying from you. So thanks for that question. That's a really good one. So I've got another question here from Robert. For, for Jim, I would presume, and we'll ask this one to Ben as well. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm Rob. I'm a new uh, antennas and security franchisee from Wagga in the Riverina. Yeah, um, yeah, we're just talking. At, at yeah. Dinner. yeah. Uh, Jim, my question's for you. Um, what keeps you awake at night? The thing I find hardest to cope with is franchisees failing. There's nothing that's more painful than that. Rob, it's just awful. 
and and even though it's a minority and it's a fairly small minority and we do so much better than people would go if they go into business for themselves, um, sometimes people fail and then you always look and say, what could we have done better? I don't think anything compares with that. I mean, even bad customer service, a customer has a bad experience, well, that's not disastrous for them because we'll always fix it. But a franchisee who fails has blown their investment. Hopefully they can sell, as, as, as Ben says, but you know, sometimes they, they can't even do that. And that's really hard. Now you, Ben, what keeps you up at night? If not um, having a beer? Worrying about how I'm going to get to the races and pick the kids up from school. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, definitely, um, yeah, franchisees, I, I'm actually, a, I don't like conflict, so um, anytime I have a dispute with someone, I might lie in bed for hours just thinking about what I could do, what I couldn't do. Maybe type up an odd, sometimes jump out of bed and type up an email that I would never ever send, but it's got all of the, how dare you do this, how dare you do that, and then you give it 24 hours and <laughs> read it yeah. and go, gee, thank God I didn't send that. <laughs> so whether it's conflict with national office staff or someone who's taken over the training and... I hope there's a bit less now, the training I didn't have. You'll never forget that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, but generally, I, like, I've got a great life and it's not too stressful most of the time. So I'll point out as well, you're involved in the advisory committee. I forgot to put that in the introduction. Yeah, so last couple of years. Um, so that has some challenges as well. Like yep. guys will go, why didn't you get back to me? And I'm like, oh, we, we sent it, but it's things that are really important to a franchisor and they want to be able to, um, you know, talk it over with me. And sometimes I don't agree with them. And so then it's like, I'll put it in, mate, but I don't think that it's um, a good, good for thing. For those who don't know, advisory committee is elected by franchisors on a state basis and they make a lot of the decisions about company policy. Um, um, veto, they can decide any changes to the manual, which have to go to referendum, but the advisory committee has to start them off. They spend the, um, the branding fund, mm -hmm. and, and in general terms, generally it sets Jim's group policy. And they're a very helpful bunch of people. We get very good advice. We often, I often get ideas which, you know, very innovative, but I don't always think of the practicalities and the committee will say, okay, well, fine, but you know, what's, what about this and this and this? And they'll modify it and just improve it. And you have it next Monday, so. Next yeah. Monday, yeah. yeah. Um, one thing that a lot of people probably don't realise about Jim is that he, he puts people into a position and he has full faith in them and will, will stick to their decisions until their time's over. But like, basically, if I'm on, once he sets the advisory committee, they make the decisions and he will not challenge that. If he puts the CEO in place or... Joel to do the uh, social media stuff, full faith in that person. That's one of Jim's great strengths and it um, seems to work well. Probably too lazy to micromanage, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Well, do you think it's burnt you in the past though, Jim, by not having that sort of sometimes or that full faith in people or do you think it's worked out yeah. more in your favour than not? Sometimes I make some pretty bad decisions and I don't recognise them for a while um, as has happened. And uh, I don't know, I'm not a great m manager really. Um, I, I, I'm hoping to employ a COO, Chief Operating Officer, come beginning of September. I've got somebody in mind who looks very good, and uh, <clears throat> that person can keep an eye on what's going on. I have a lot of good ideas, but I'm not necessarily a great executor executor manager, yeah, yeah. Yeah. which is why I do that. I tend to put people on, and, and by trial and error, I've got pretty good people uh, in every level, and including um, Mike Runs Training, who's been running <laughs> it for years, and, and you know, regardless of the, the fiendishly conniving way he got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Stabbing his fellow franchisor in the back. He's actually, he actually does it very well. He's a gun trainer, he's really good. Yes, he is. Well, I didn't know about that, so I've learned that new, so I've definitely changed my opinion on him, Mike, from here. Now, from <laughs> I don't know what you about that. He never told me about that one. So I've got a question here from, from John regarding the division. <coughs> where is John? So where are you from, John? John from Mowing. Cool. Um, the question's for Jim. What's your second favourite division in the Jim's group? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> uh, I mean, it doesn't make any sense in a sense, but I love personal training. It's a new division. But I'm just a big believer in fitness. I, I love fitness. I love being fit. I'm, I'm a huge believer. I'm always talking to my kids about it. I just think it's one of the best things you can do. If you could bottle the effects of fitness and, you know, and put them into a pill, you know, it, it, it extends your life, it makes you more hardworking, it makes you more energetic, it makes you happier, you're less likely to get cancer, less like a heart disease. I mean, it's an incredibly great and wonderful thing. So I reckon 
Personal training is great, but if you really, really want to get fit, the best thing is to buy a mind franchise. <laughs> that way you, you get paid for exercising. <laughs> what about you, Ben? Do you have a second favourite one? Um, oh, I remember the Preggy Bellies one. That was uh, an interesting one. But um, um, Test and Tag, I, I worked alongside them when I was doing the training and they had some amazing systems. And But basically all the divisions... The, the divisionals, or the they, they bring so much new information to us. So we, we'll learn something at the next conference from the personal training guys. Um, when antennas had some great advancements in technology before the other divisions did. Um, so sort of to have a fact, yeah, they're all got some good one, people around. Them. One really great thing about Test and Tag is they've got a very very low attrition rate. People who come to Test and Tag they just stay for years and years and years. It's, it's the lowest of any division in gyms group, which is what I really love. I mean, I'd like if everybody could have virtually zero attrition, we would be doing so well. But, yeah. yeah, they're a really good culture test and tag. Like every, each division, for people that don't know, they have probably their own little culture, which is mm. driven by the division, which is why the division is so important because, and the Zors in that, they're the ones who drive that culture in a sort of a silo, whether it be mind, cleaning, personal training, whatever. But um, that's a good answer. I don't think people were expecting you to say personal training. I think I've had a few people from dog washing clean saying, you know, but all that sort of stuff. So, where's, I mean, when I ask you this question. Well, cleaning's is, a big rival, actually, in the West, because cleaning's actually overtaking mowing right now. So, Hannah and I are always joshing each other about it. Whenever mowing gets more mowing than more people in training than, than cleaning, yep. I always I always, I always, always have a go at Hadar about it. So it's <laughs> well, who like you know if it's the right around, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, I'm going to ask you a question which is quickly related to fitness, and we'll get into a few more. So, where's Joe regarding the treadmill? This is quickly related to the PT stuff. Hi, I'm Joe from Mowing, but my question is a personal one. Uh, do you get sore plantar fasciitis after running on the treadmill barefoot? Do I get which? Sore plantar fasciitis. You know, sore heels running on the treadmill in bare feet. No, actually, no, because because when you run bare feet, you tend to run on the soles of your feet, and barefoot running is a big thing these days. Because when you when you have um, shoes, there is a lot of theory that says that having a heavy cushion on your shoe actually makes it more likely to get damage. And it's remarkable, I'm 67 and I run 5Ks most days and I have so little problem with my feet and my ankles. So um, I, I strongly recommend barefoot running. I think it's the best. What are you, Ben? Do you run 5Ks a day Yeah, I was morning? just trying to work out how many years it would be since I've <laughs> ran more than 5Ks. <laughs> so I don't think I've ran 5Ks in total since 2007. <laughs> but, but, but squash, I also, I, even better than running on treadmill, I love playing squash. He does. That is a really, really fun game. Yeah. And you just play squash for an hour and you are completely blasted, just staggering around a place like that. And it's so fun. I love playing squash. You mentioned every week he, he plays with a lot of the national staff regularly and beats them all. And they're not deliberately losing, I can tell you that right now. So. One of the divisional was worth playing squash yeah. with him and did his Achilles, so it can be a trap. Remember Greg? Yeah. Yeah. And you kept playing apparently, didn't you, or did you stop? That's right. He was pathetic. You know, he, he was lying on the floor groaning and I was just kept on winning all the points. I don't know what he was doing. He was just terrible. Ah! <laughs> oh! I said, come on, Greg, get, hit the ball back. But describe Greg, he was a big burly bloke, probably about six two, yeah, six three. He was, he was big. Hundred kilos plus and he's I could imagine lying on the killers and you'll just keep playing over and telling him get up, so that didn't actually happen that way, thank okay. you very well, much. Gonna, that's what they say. We're gonna exaggerate it a bit, so right, just for the audience. Well we're okay. gonna have a racquetball court one of these days here, so people can come and want to play racquetball with me when they come to training, they can do that. So thanks for that question. That was an interesting one. So we've got a few people reading some comments on here. So Rob Ellis from Jim's Batteries goes, I'd like to thank Jim for the emails last week. And I've organised a couple of meetings. Rob Ellis from Jim's oh, Batteries ring the bell. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I should mention that in one of my talks, I think. Okay, cool. He, he had problems with it. And I just, and I just I asked where he, was, where he was working. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then I sent an email to all the franchisors to say, could you help this guy and have him come to the meeting and do free battery checks on all, on all your... Um, this was a networking type thing. I remember you mentioned on the live thing last week. You yeah. said just email and you gave him all the things. Because we've got like you know, 500 franchisees in, in, in Melbourne. So there's a fantastic internal market for think something like batteries. Yeah, no, it definitely is. So yeah, he came and did mine too, actually. I remember you saying that. Yeah, you come along here, yeah. which has been a great experience. So that's really good. Thanks for tuning in. He did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Stewart, he's gone test and tag conference next week. See you there, Jim. So looking forward to seeing you, Andy. So... Where's Lee? Lee had a question regarding mowing image. Hello, Lee. Thanks, Mike. Ta. Lee from the cleaning division in South Australia. Who or how did the gym's mowing image appear? Who or how did the gym's mowing image appear was the question. Um, it's it's no, no great thought. <laughs> when I franchised, I used to put my picture on my leaflets because they actually got a better response. 
And when we decided to franchise, you couldn't put a photo on a, um, on a leaflet, so I just got a graphical image done, and we just put the name Jim's mowing underneath it, and we experimented with a few things. I think it probably cost me about 100 bucks to design that logo. And then down the track a bit, they, they, they updated the logo, maybe a bit more friendly. <laughs> used to, yeah, it used yeah, to be listen, very grumpy. Yeah, yeah it was a very grumpy. Yeah. Like it was a very grumpy Jim, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a bit yeah. more smiling now, yeah. Does the uh, gym shop have Terry Tailing hats, or are they? Yes, we do. We do yes. have gyms. We have Good. some bucket hats on there. We're just testing it. So we haven't put it on. Yeah, they're on there, so you can get a bucket hat with gyms. And I'm hoping we have festival season a few of the should kids we, get them. We should have yes. the, fake, the fake beers as well. That can really. I want to do it the cricket. So the plan is to do a cricket, do like a gym's army thing. And if you get spotted on TV with the beard and the hat, we'll give you a voucher or something. So that's the plan. Mm -hmm. um, we'll organise that in um, summertime. So I've got another great question here from I think it's Anash or Anash regarding the online booking system. Are they here? Ash. Oh, sorry. Apologies. Apologies. Ash from uh, Antenna and Security. Antenna. My question is, uh, as you mentioned, about 180,000 on-service jobs last year. Mm. Is there any way to improve the booking system? Thank you. What well, we want more jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean by that, unless you mean to get more work. Yeah, we're, we're always looking at that, actually. This is one of the things that, um, that Joel is interested in. He, he goes into these sites and looks at things like how long it takes a, um, a website to load. For example, I mean, we had websites that were taking 11 seconds to load, and it really got to be done in, in three seconds maximum. Yeah, so regarding the booking process, it's a good question. Um, it's called user experience, so you refer it as UX, UI design. So we've actually engaged a full uh, a person to do that just that. So I'm actually presenting at the divisional next Monday, a redo of the customer booking process. So it's a really well-timed question. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to the conversion rates of that, so that the old book a gym form, which was around 14 steps before someone could submit for a job, was too lot, too much, and we've changed it to a new CV form. Um, the experience is still not the best, so we have reviewed it with an external party and got actual customers feedback. So they were interviewed, we sat down with customers from different income groups, you know, people earning 50k to 200k went through the whole booking process and you basically document everything. And now we come up with a redesign based on what they've done. And basically what's going to happen is we present at the division next, uh, next Monday, which is showing them all that sort of stuff. And then we're going to try and implement it across every one of our websites to hopefully improve it, to increase conversions. Because you know, when they click through to a page, you want to make it as easy as possible so that that traffic that you're spending money to drive to your page actually mm. sticks and takes action with some call to action. So, we are doing it, and um, we actually, Jim's approved a lot of money in that process to do it. Um, it's just a matter of getting it right and just doing it properly before we roll it out. So we are trying to book the, improve the process all the time. Um, it's come a long way from where it was with our IT guys from a year ago, but um, we can get better. And that's it's actually quite shocking how many people you lose. They start doing an online booking and don't continue. Yeah, so we're we finding that most of them were actually not going through it. Yeah, so we record visitors. So we have a program called Hotjar, which actually does, does heat map tracking and actually records every single user who clicks on through the gyms.net, for example, we don't put it on other sites, but gyms.net, anyone who books, we actually record the user. So we can see their mouse and we can see it as a trag. So they get confused, right? Well, then why are they getting confused? So then we have to make sure it's more simplified with more simplified wording or different typography or different colors. So that process of UX UI is a continuing process. So we are doing it at the moment and we will have a plugin which has been developed um, hopefully by um, the end of the year, which will roll out. The current one we've got is pretty good. I, I don't think it's too bad. It's a definitely an improvement from that. But um, other than that, um, we are doing it. And we, we agree if you can always do better. So it's a really good and well-timed question. So how do you find the booking process? I don't know. Obviously, you've got a lot of leads down there. but Yeah, no, um, no complaints. It's, it's important to remember 50 divisions, 10 to 15 services per division. There's a lot of, like, it's not as easy to, to put together as what you would think, possibly. But um, no. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely happy with it. And the, the key with Jim is that he just keeps trying to improve things. So um, you'll never get him saying that's perfect. Well, the problem we have is the um, is the service codes. Yeah. Now, if you don't know, if you have a look at the service codes on customer booking, they're mainly probably more for franchisees because that's what's in FMS. Yep. So they're in FMS, those service codes, um, and customers get there and they read it and it's Jim lingo, yep. right? And so we think that sort of puts people off. So we're going to try and condense it and see how we can do it, because it is franchisee focused to customer booking. So when you log into fencing, for example, there might be 35 service codes, which the fencing guy will know exactly what that means, but if I'm a customer, I am go there, I just want a fence done, and I see all these variations, it's a paradox of choice. If you give too many choices, people get paralyzed and don't make one, so we've got to work out a way to try and balance it now with the customer. Mm. So we've always done it for the franchisee focus, which has been great for franchisees, because they can pick and choose and whatever, 
but we need to get back towards more of the customer experience and condense those codes. They have a balance as well where the franchisees are happy with it. Great example is Mow Once, Mow Reg. Yeah. Mm. That's a great example. Mm. Yeah. People just want to do mowing, you know? Yeah. But we have the ability for someone to pick a mowing like a regular or a you know, once off job, whereas a customer, you know, that's sort of the thing we need to look at. Yeah. Mm. I've got another question here from Peter. Where's Peter? Uh, Peter from Jim's Mowing in Kingscliff. Um, who has been your greatest mentor? Great question. For me personally, um, my greatest mentor currently is a guy called Marcus Kopp, who's a business advisor. I've only been seeing him for about the last year, but he comes in um, one day a month and he just, we just talk to him about problems and every time he comes up with some sort of solution. We were looking at going public at one stage and he spent like two hours and he explained why we shouldn't go public and it was totally convincing. Um, <clears throat> things like um, in our IT department getting um, business analysts to figure out the exact program before we programmed it and then so we could also outsource to India. That's, that comes from, from him. So he just, he's just really brilliant. At, 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 He's, he's, he's a wonderful guy. He's yeah. actually, if anything happened to me, he'd be the, like the chair of the board that ran Jim's group because he's, he's an amazing bloke. He's great at business and he's a very sincere Christian. He spends about half his time working without profit for this great missionary organisation. So, yeah, yeah, so Marcus comes in there, very long meetings. I think I go into a lot of them. I, yes. I enjoy it. I get along well with Marcus and he's a... Very impressive, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He's an executive chairman for a big company and he's, um, he's done a lot of boards and stuff. So he, it's great because... Jim's a very, because I know Jim pretty well, I've been around for eight years and Ben would obviously know Jim as well. Jim's a great ideas man. Mm. Great ideas man, brilliant in ideas, but as you said before, the execution. Not so good. The practicality sometimes is not so good. So having someone who can sort of push back with Jim or maybe say, maybe do it this way and actually tell about how to implement the ideas and all that sort of stuff is, is good balance for Jim. So Mark has got that real corporate sort of, that sort of, it, that sort of thinking. And then Jim's got that, you know, that ideas and they mm. counterbalance each other well. And, and he's a good person as well. You know, I think having a good person in the business, there's no underhanded motives or anything with him. You know, I can honestly say that from being in every one of those meetings with Jim when Marcus comes on in there for two, three hours as well. And um, we learn a lot and um, it's been great. Well, last week we had an interview with the potential COO. Yes, And we did. Um, Joel was there and some of my managers and, and, um, and Marcus was there too. Yep. So we got a, a range of opinions as to whether this person would suit us. Yeah, and I think it's great. You know, I think definitely, you know, us um, consulting a lot more internally and stuff with other people's opinions has been great and um, something we're doing a lot more. And we also encourage you as franchisees and franchisors to um, email Jim as well, any ideas and suggestions. Mm. I know that on a weekly basis, I get an email out of the blue with a franchisee or a franchisor sees it in, Joel, can we do this all the time? Which is great. So, um, yeah, you go for a bit. Uh, and as franchisees, you need to find some decent mentors. It's no different to the, the schoolyard or the whatever if you um, hang with or hang with the right people um, if you mix with the right people and you can learn little snippets from different people but there'll be leaders within your region or your franchise area and it's um, it's it will have a massive impact on your business if you saddle up alongside the right people and um, I've been lucky enough in gyms to um, whether it be the parks or the Hader from cleaning or um, yeah Sharon from dog washing cleaning um, even uh, my father-in-law is a, a great businessman down in Geelong and very uh, well respected in the community so I learn a lot from him but you just got to drag bits and people bits and pieces out of um, different people that you interact with and it will make you um, definitely a better franchisee on the back of it. Well as an 18 year old how did you find who helped you out the most in the early days? My franchisor at the time Theo right. Benny um, yeah. Uh, yeah just was great we had like I tend to warn the people that have a bit of fun I don't uh, <laughs> try to take things too seriously he used to just laugh and laugh I'd come in and tell him that I'd, you know, um, you know, not run over a dog because I didn't do that, but <laughs> got covered in yep. um, like man, yep. dog doings. Or, yep. um, but he would just laugh and laugh and he'd come in and he'd ring me up and say, tell us tell us a story from today. And Theo's the, he's about that size of a... Taller, taller fella, Theo Benny, yeah. That's yeah. who I brought, brought off. And then he went into the um, gyms and, and it didn't go so well for him. But great, uh, great to me and um, taught me a lot. And... and yeah, it didn't take life too seriously, which is important. Mm. Peter Murphy's gone on here. He's gone to ask Ben about his other Uber experience to Blakey. Peter Murphy. Peter Murphy, <laughs> uh, wonderful man. But um, <laughs> uh, in short, I had a big day down at the local footy club and um, good on you, Pete. Um, <laughs> you got to be a bit with that one. I don't know if you respect that one. So. Yeah, so um, yeah. Uh, went, had a big day down at the uh, football club, 
jumped in the Uber. The footy club's about 40 minute drive. So I got the Uber home. Um, my wife's in bed. I've jumped on the couch, left the front door open because I needed the Uber man to be able to uh, think. Oh, and I fell asleep on the couch. May not have had my pants on um, <laughs> in full view of the, uh, the front door. So anyway, my wife comes up. I wake up to my wife going, there's the Uber man's been in our front um, foyer yelling out your name for the last 10 minutes. Do you really think you need McDonald's? Handed it to me. I ate the McDonald's, jumped into bed, started snoring, and then my wife woke me up to a, me being shaped, uh, wakes me up again saying there's someone at the door. And I said, no, they're not. Ben, there's someone at the door. Get up now. So I go to the front door and there's a man, an Uber man standing there with a souvlaki. So <laughs> somehow between going home, I've placed two Uber Eats orders and forgotten about one of them. <laughs> thanks, thanks very much, Pete. Yeah, thanks for that one, Peter. And Kerry, do you, get, do you get much Uber Eats at all, Jim? I didn't ask you that before. What's that? Sorry. Uber Eats. Do you, do, you got, do you get Uber Eats at home? I tend to use Menulog. I use Menulog. All right. yeah. what, is there any reason why I have an Uber? No, just, no, it's I'm just used to them. We yep. order, we order too much. <laughs> order too much. <laughs> Not as much as Favola, thirty-five thousand. I think he spent on Uber Eats last year. Brendan Favola. Yeah, that's pretty um pretty full on. As you're talking about uh, mentoring, everyone needs a good role model. <laughs> <laughs> talking about mentoring before, actually, I don't know you find people as mentors, but there's a lot of people I learn a great deal from, and people like Hader. And Sharon Connell, I've learned an enormous amount about how to be a successful franchise, or Tino Grossi too, in, in many, many different ways. And, and also from many wide variety of franchises and franchisors throughout Jim's group. So a mentor isn't always somebody who's more experienced that you look up to. It's in some ways, it's somebody you just learn from. Yeah, no, that's a good point. And I think the most successful people, we've done a lot of interviews with the divisionals, which are on YouTube and, and um, podcasts, and they all say the same thing. You know, like Hayar, for example, is multi, you know, very successful man, but he yeah. listens to whoever it is if they've got something that brings to the table. He's not shut off at all. We've got to be mutual mentors in a way. Yeah. Because he learns from me and I learn from him. We, get, we sit down and have lunch together and we'll talk for an hour, hour and a half, and, and just ideas flashing back and forth. He's done some great things. Like one of the things that, that he did, well, actually, as Ali, um, was he ran all the franchisees from cleaning yes. who'd left in the last year, and about four of them came back. I thought, what an incredible idea. So we started doing that. Yeah, we definitely have, and it's been some good people, data. Some people go independent, and then they, which is not uncommon, it's very easy with us to go independent if you wish to, but then they find it's not quite so rosy out there, so they, when you ring them up and you say, how's things going? Oh, well, you know, could I come back? And, and we bring them back, and that's great. Yeah, that's true, and that's that a good exercise by Alan, you're definitely replicating it. So I've got a question here from Deborah, which is quite relevant to before, where's Deborah? Hi, Jim. Deborah from Bookkeeping. Hi, Deborah. You've already touched on it slightly, but um, my question's uh, a little bit left field. What happens if Jim doesn't wake up tomorrow? What's the <laughs> contingency plan for the Jim's group? Well, Marcus will be head of the, the committee, and my wife, Lee, is on it, who's quite capable um, in the business sense, and a couple of my kids that I would trust. But basically, we've got a very strong management team in place, and... and all I'd have to do is to keep an eye on them. In, in general, I don't think you'd have to change very much. Because most things that go on in business, I don't do it. I mean, we've got a, a gala dinner um, next week on Friday, which yes. is a big thing. Well, I didn't even know today what the, what the, what the show was. It's a Neil Diamond, of all things, um, <laughs> tribute. But I just didn't even know. I didn't know what they were charging or anything. So I actually, in fact, I run very little in, in Jim's group. I'm, the, I'm just the one that comes along with all these ideas and hits people with them and say, let's do this, let's do that, let's do that, and changing everything all the time, which drives people mad, yes. But that was very well asked, because in advice we say, what happens if you get hit by a bus? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot, a lot nicer. <laughs> it's a question that comes up quite regularly. I think we get it every two weeks. I am concerned about it. I am, because I, it, so much, you, you can see what it can happen to companies when you get someone like a... Um, Retail food group take over. What 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 a what a well-run franchise is and start screwing them for money. Um, I'm very concerned that it would not happen to gyms. Our contracts actually provide a lot of protection because our franchisees and the franchisors have so many rights that no other franchise system does. Um, we'd like to put a system. We're talking about putting a system in which means the national franchisor can be voted out too down the track a bit. Not because I think I would be, but because some successor they start to do the wrong thing. So I, a lot of it's got to do with empowerment, I think, and, and, and giving franchises and franchisors real power and, and say over what happens to them. 
because yeah. it affects a lot of people. It's not just the franchisor. I think a thing that's undersold on gyms as a company is the, um, that, we're, that it's private. As soon as the franchising system goes public most of the time, their number one duty changes from the franchisee to the shareholder mm -hmm. by the Corporations Act, right? So they're trying to maximise the money they can make out of the franchisee to return that to the shareholder. Whereas with gym, it's always going to be private. So um, I think I was, was that one of the reasons why we never, why you never wanted to go, did that come into it at the later stage about that or? Oh, I don't care what the corporation takes. So I'm never going to do anything that wouldn't act in the <laughs> sure. interest of my franchisees because sure. I just think long term. When you've got a single controlling shareholder, even if you're public, you really, we, we would think long term. Yeah, sure. So it's a great question. We get that a lot. I've got a question here. Is it from May regarding Mirror? May or something from the Mirror? Oh, Ray, sorry. Oh, it's like, that's an M. Yeah, well, like a May. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's an M. I had no idea. It's a Ray. Sorry, Ray. Hi, Jim. It's Ray here from Jim's Mowing, our prospective franchisee. Um, just quickly, when you look in the mirror, um, do you look in the mirror during times where things are going well and uh, take the achievements? Or do you look in the mirror at times when things aren't going well? Well, we are going pretty well overall. I mean, by every reasonable measure, we're a profitable, stable company with a good reputation and getting better. Um, but I, I don't ever look at the mirror and say, hey, how good are we? I always look in the mirror and say, how... Actually, I don't look in the mirror. This, this, this place is ugly enough to imagine without actually looking at it. <laughs> But, but I'm, always, I'm always with the mind of how can we do better. I, I don't think I ever sit back and just say how good we are. I, I just never think that way. I'm always thinking, what's the next stage? I sit every day and I go through complaints. Every day I look at these complaints and I think, what could we do? How could we avoid this happening? And that's, that's my whole attitude, always has been. I'm never, ever, ever, ever satisfied. What are you, Ben? Is um, there a point, are you sort of... Like well, avoid mirrors as well. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, <laughs> no, I think you just go three ways of up and down where sometimes you're thinking everything's going great and sure enough you'll get shot down straight away. So I think, um, um, yeah, constant improvement um, and that's probably, that was the impact of working here under, um, alongside Jim. Um, it's probably had an impact on me in that way but um, yeah, trying to do things better mm -hmm. is a good attitude to have and it's actually interesting with franchisees, they'll have a goal that they want to turn over, let's say, 120,000. They'll do that. They'll walk around for the next 12 months with their chest out thinking, I've done it, how great am I? And their sales will drop by 20 grand that next year. And it happens a lot because they sort of think that they've reached their goal and it's just going to happen again next year. But if you're not constantly mm. analysing your business, you won't reach that same goal again. It's a great question there. And what we're going to do is, I think we've nearly got through all the questions here, which is great. And thanks to everyone who's tuning in so far. There's another more question here from Henry. We get asked this all the time, but, but that's all good. We're going, to put, we're going to ask this again, and we always get it. Hi, Jim. I'm um, Henry from Moens Group. Um, you probably do get asked the question a lot about <laughs> why did you shave your beard off? And my question to you is, would you ever grow it back? Yes. You would. If anybody sets up a system where I can raise at least $100,000 for a mental health charity like Beyond Blue, I'll, rate, I'll, I'll go it back on that. So there, there's your target. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Daniel, Daniel Heron. I had a friend ask me to ask you that tonight. So. Yeah, we yeah. tend to get it all the time, right? What we're going to do actually to, we're going to put up 10 questions about Jim on the actual gyms.net and we're going to actually go, you know, that, that one will be on there. You can click it and there'll be the video with that sort of answer that will come up. So we're going to do, like I said, learn more about Jim. So if you want to know a bit about Jim, head to gyms.net. There is a Meet Jim tab there. Hit that. We do add a lot of content in there as well. Um, what about you, Ben? Would you participate in that? Can you have to participate in that. Yeah. Can you go a nice beard back, you reckon? Oh, no, in terms of, well, yeah. it'll take a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, Movember, we used to, um, gyms were a big part of Movember for, for a long time, and uh, by about the 29th of uh, November, people would start saying, oh, so you're trying to grow a beard, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, be late on it. So there was a couple of big stunts you did. I remember you pushed the mower all the way up, the, was it all the way up? From Tassie it? to uh, North Queensland? Brisbane, Tassie to Brisbane. Yeah. And, that's, and the other one was the world's biggest mustache mowed into the... Yeah, which is on the mowing website, yes. possibly the Gyms Group one, but we mowed in Avalon Airport, close to the City of Dreams. Um, <laughs> we did the big mustache in the airport um, paddock, which was amazing, really. Yeah, there's a great video of that. If you punch in, um, I think Gyms Mowing, yeah, Gyms Mowing mustache, it will be on the Gyms Group um, YouTube channel. You can actually see it. It was a quite a um, pretty cool 
cool event. Yeah. And that, that was to be on blue, wasn't it? Or was November. It? November, that one. November, yeah, because we yeah. put the moustache in there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you actually, aerial shot of it, it's right next to the field. It's a massive, yeah, massive moustache was done by the whole team and <laughs> nice bit of promo there. So I think I've got through everyone's questions there. So it's just after eight o'clock. I know you said you want to keep it to an hour, so I'm, I'm all strict. Actually, there was one more question regarding uh, the cooking. Sorry, who had the cooking? Was it Ken? Cooking? So I'm just going to get this one before, before, because I know this, this one will be a bit funny, I reckon. Ken, mowing, Sydney region. Um, I know it's Jim, you're here every night with lunch. And how many times your wife cook each week? Oh, <laughs> I don't know, three or four times a week. Not so much during training week, but because uh, I, I eat here a lot. I, want, I like to eat with my, friend, with my trainees if I, as much as I possibly can during the training week. But she's not a bad cook, but she also works really hard. Trying to drag her away from her computer at 10.30 at night to come to bed is pretty difficult. She's, she's a real workaholic. She said, she was a humble workaholic. I'm nothing compared with her. She's got, she runs this conference centre. She runs the factory that makes the fiberglass trailers for dog washing. She also got a building business. Wow. And uh, she's a very active lady, my wife. We've had Leon before. Very yeah. beautiful too. She is. We had we had Leon before. So if you actually want to see what Jim's wife is, and, and have, we had actually an Ask Jim episode with Lee. It was probably three or four weeks back, and um, it was quite funny. It's quite interesting to watch that. And um, you guys complement each other pretty well. You know, obviously Lee's very process driven, and you're more of the the creative ideas man. And we argue like cats and dogs at times. I can tell you. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Always in that business. I can imagine. Yeah. All right. So thanks for that question. I think we got through everyone there. So guys, what question did you make a note? Of any questions there from here that you liked in particular that you remember for the books? I'll jump in first in case Jim steals mine. Yep. But the uh, question about the second favourite division, obviously mowing is always going to be the best. But uh, I like that one. That was good. Very, very good question that one. So I will give you a signed book and we'll get that Jim to do it at the end. And what about you, Jim? Uh, questions about the research. That's that's always the one. Yeah, actually, if you like this book, you can, you're welcome to that one. Have you got have you got a copy of this? No. Yeah, I'll give you this one. This Thank is you. really interesting. So Jim will sign that. And the one I'm going to pick from online. Is I like the one from um, I mean, I think Eric might have the books. I'm gonna have to give you another one. I'm gonna give it to Eric Jurgens. You'll be here next week, so um, we'll get your sign book and I'll give you that one from Mobile Cafe. But everyone, thanks for tuning in. We've had a really nice, consistent viewership through here. Thanks for the audience for hanging around and putting those questions on there. It was a great different set of questions tonight. Pre appreciate your time, Ben, as well. Um, I know you've got a job. big job to drive back to the city of dreams, so we don't yeah. hold from the city of dreams much longer. But we appreciate those insights as well, regarding Mike especially. I never knew that. Yeah. So you've changed, you've changed my view. Political background stuff. So thank you, everyone. Um, and thanks to Jim as well. Um, we just went over an hour, Jim, so I've been mindful of that. Yeah. And we'll be again on next week, Wednesday, 7 o'clock. Now, next week, our guests will be the, the manager of the call centre, which I think is a great one for everyone. So if you're a franchisee, franchise, or divisional, it's during conference week, so we're going to have a lot of divisionals in the audience as well and some regionals. So the questions might be pretty tough, I reckon, actually. So that's going to be here next week, live, 7 o'clock, Wednesday again. And thanks to everyone who watched tonight and everyone who hanged around and participated and interacted on live feed. I look forward to seeing you again next week at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. So have a good night, guys, and thanks for tuning in.